Hi, I'm Diana Pomeroy. I'm a self-taught artist and author. In this podcast, I reminisce about the things that I'm passionate about. It currently doesn't have a title. I'm still working on it. In this episode of the podcast, which will release prior to May the 4th, I'm going to discuss Star Wars. Just a disclaimer for the listeners out there that are Star Wars fans. I am a Star Wars fan, but I'm not a part of the fandom at large. I will never forget the first time that I watched Star Wars. When I was a kid, I would say starting around when I was close to 10 years old, my dad, a cinephile and photographer, put on a lot of his favorite movies for me and my siblings to watch most days in the summers away from school. I would much rather have played outside in my parents' backyard, sitting by their apricot tree, making my dinosaurs, horses, and ponies fight in endless docudramas. Or I would play Sonic 3 on the Sega Genesis that I still own. I was in my head a lot as a kid, and I loved being lost in my own imagination. In many ways, it's how I survived that time in my life. I was not happy about being sat down in front of the VHS player, even less so with the THX audio intro. This still makes me jump out of my seat whenever I'm at home, either expecting it or in the theater at the start of the film. And then the music of John Williams and a backward scrolling screen with lots to read caught my attention in a good way. When Luke Skywalker, the actor Mark Hamill, began the hero's journey with A New Hope, I fell in love. I preferred him over Han Solo. Harrison Ford was always Indiana Jones to me. And even over the snarky Princess Leia. Why she went from hunting down the Blues Brothers to being a space princess was beyond me. I immediately began to write my own Star Wars fan fiction and desperately wanted to meet in person with Luke, Leia, Han, Chewie, C-3PO, and R2-D2. Yes, the droids too. I thought when I was a kid that if you just went to Hollywood, like if you visited them, they would just like appear, I guess. Um... I didn't have the concept that, you know, they, they were actors um, with working, busy lives. Um, but yeah, I, I just was obsessed immediately. So I started writing my own stories and, you know, Star Wars stuff. And after the original film, The New Hope, I, I got into watching Empire Strikes Back. And I found the movie a bit long as a kid. I really learned to enjoy it as an adult uh, after many rewatches and Return of the Jedi. I found that to be a satisfying conclusion to the original trilogy. I had the Star Wars Encyclopedia. I had a few of the novels and the comic books. I wanted an R2 unit of my own, but I got a Radio Shack knockoff. I'll never forget that. Like my dad, you know, was trying his best, I think, to fulfill that wish. And I, you know, for whatever reason, I was like, yeah, I want the R2-D2 droid. Because I think they had that. I'm not sure if anybody recalls that, but there was a commercial for this uh, droid, it could bring you stuff. Like, it had a little tray, and he could, like, do stuff for you. Like, you'd command the droid, and he could roll in different places. Think of it, for folks today that are younger, think of it like a Roomba. (laughs) With, you know, with attachments that can bring you stuff. It's basically what I wanted. Um, And, you know, I, I, to this day, don't have an R2 unit of my own. Um, But that's what I wanted, and I got the Radio Shack version that my dad could talk into. And um, I'll, I'll never forget that. It's one of the it's one of the better memories that I have of him. When I was a kid, I wanted a lightsaber. Um, the way I made lightsabers in school is I took those stamper markers and you could stack them. So I took a bunch of them and I, I stacked them up and I I made like this really long <laughs> lightsaber sword and I just started like you know whacking people with it. I was I was just ridiculous. Um, I I loved reenacting you know movies when I was at school and I was at home and. I love the thrill of the chase scenes in the movies, the twists and turns of the story. And suffice it to say, I was hooked on Star Wars. For many years, the original trilogy, which was A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and uh, Return of the Jedi, those were my Star Wars movies. When I was a kid, too, I mean, besides the R2 unit and the lightsaber that never came to pass, I did manage to get a Micro Machines um, Millennium Falcon. My brother got a few sets, too. Uh, He got a Chewbacca, the Wookiee Micro Machines head, and a Star Wars Darth Vader one. And there were a few other sets that he got that I inherited from him a few years ago. So I I have them on display now. And uh, before leading up to uh, May the 4th on my YouTube channel here, I'm going to be sharing my Micro Machines with you. I'm going to share Micro Machines Millennium Falcon. That's the first video that's going to go up after this uh, post. I'm going to be sharing some other videos and things. So... 
more content is to come. Uh, thank you for your patience on that, for folks that, that they, they watch the regular uh, YouTube videos and shorts. You know, I, a few years passed from when I was around 10 years old until middle school. And new Star Wars stuff didn't really come out. It was like all the old Star Wars stuff. It was the original trilogy. Um, they re-released it in the theaters, I think. I don't remember if I saw it in the theaters as a kid or not. I, I do remember seeing uh, the prequels, uh, the Star Wars prequels, episodes one, two, and three uh, in the theaters because those came out around the same time Lord of the Rings did. So those came out when I was in middle school, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. And I think a lot of my listeners uh, are in that age range. Uh, you know, at least you're familiar with the prequels. Uh, I know also, too, I have a little bit of an older uh, audience in some cases, so you may be more familiar with the original trilogy. But I remember when the prequels came out. I remember when it was a big deal. And all my friends, you know, they were all into Hayden Christensen. And uh, they were really into, you know, the Padme Anakin love story. And I just wasn't. <laughs> I... You know, I, I guess even then I saw it as problematic because I was like, well, that's Darth Vader. Like, he's evil. Uh, spoiler alert <laughs> for folks that haven't seen the Star Wars movies. Um, but, you know, the only character that I really enjoyed uh, in the prequels was actually the most hated Star Wars character of all time. And that was Jar Jar Binks. I don't know why I was in love with Jar Jar Binks. I couldn't tell you. I just, did he look, he looked like a dinosaur and I, I love dinosaurs. So he was a dinosaur cross with a man, I guess, you know, to me, that was like the perfect person <laughs> to be with. I don't know. I, I, you know, maybe it's the tongue. I don't know. Just, just something. The goofy way he walked and talked, you know, the fact of the matter is, you know, when I was, I mean, middle school is an awkward time as it is. Um, so if I said to say, I just, I, I love Jar Jar Biggs because he was clumsy, he was goofy. He was like literally like a fish out of water in that story. And I really took to that type of character. And, you know, I was so obsessed with Jar Jar Biggs that I had, I got a plushie one year, I think for a birthday. And my friends in middle school would tease me constantly. And they would say, I'm either going to marry Jar Jar Biggs or I'm going to marry uh, Joey Fatone from NSYNC. And joke's on them because neither of those things happened. So, I, yeah, I, I don't really miss my time in, in middle school or high school. Um, but the prequels, that, that's that time frame in my mind uh, that brings it back to it. And honestly, like, it's funny because all the fan fiction that I wrote about Star Wars focused more on the original trilogy because, I don't know, for me... Like, Luke Skywalker, that character was really my first love in terms of, like, scientific fiction, science storytelling. And I knew, like, that that to me made more sense than, you know, the prequel series. I, I guess, I don't know, I just, I had this in my head that I just wasn't really into the prequels. And on rewatching them recently, as in a couple of weeks ago, um... Yeah, I still feel the same way. I just, I can't get into it. I can't get into the prequels. I mean, I love the effects, but there's just something about it that just puts me off. And that said, I want to kind of fast forward from, you know, high school years of mine to, to the present. I don't know if I brought this up in previous podcasts that I've done or in previous uh, things like this, but uh, in the past few years, uh, starting around 2015, 2016, I was really in a tumultuous series of relationships and platonic and otherwise. They're just bad, bad situations all, all around. And a means of escape for me, as always, uh, from the time I was young going forward, it's not only being in my own head, but going to the movies. So I gave the Star Wars sequels, The Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker. I watched those in the theaters. And I think Rogue One, too, kind of falls under this category, too. But I gave them a watch in the theaters and... I mean, I liked them. I won't say that they're bad right away. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I gave them a watch, and I one thing that I did was I immediately set about writing fan fiction once again, this time focusing on the new characters, and I wanted to make them make sense in regards to the feel of the original trilogy. And sadly, fan fiction doesn't really do much in that regard. I could dream, right? But don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I find that the new 
sequel. I, I really like the tech in this better than I did the prequels, obviously, where it was a combination of, again, like standard, realistic, cinematic, uh, like puppetry and, uh, you know, actual objects that are used in addition to CGI. So it's, it's a little bit of both. Um, I love the new characters, Ray, Kylo Ren, Rose, Poe, Finn, BB-8. I love all of that stuff. I mean, I think that's really cool. I, I love Ray and Kylo Ren. Their dynamic is really a mean push for the fan fiction that I wrote because I felt so much there. There was like, there was, you could create a lot of depth with this. And I think that was really the main problem for me with the sequel films is that the characters themselves you know, they all have this presence to them, but there wasn't a lot of depth to the story. And it wasn't really that meaningful of a story. Like there was a lot of jump cutting and it was a lot of it, I think, was lost in translation between the different writers. And I just it didn't hook me the same way that the George Lucas trilogy, the original one from 77 on did, you know, to try to keep this a light podcast and to leave the negativity on the cutting room floor. I'm not going to wax poetic about the woes of the new stories. And that's really something I'm going to leave for other Star Wars fans and YouTubers to do. And believe me, there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of hate out there for the, for the sequels. But I will say that, it, you know, it did get me writing again. Um, I will say that. And I, I appreciate that series uh, for that. And I, like I said, I mean, my favorite characters in the new, besides BB-8, I mean, I, you know, the droids, C-3PO, R2-D2, BB-8. They always, you know, they're they're interesting to me. You know, when I was a kid, again, I had the Star Wars Encyclopedia. So, I mean, one of the first things I read about were, you know, all the droids. And, you know, I uh, I just, I found the whole thing interesting. I, I really do. I, I don't know why. Um, it's just a story that I've been fascinated with for most of my life. A few years ago, uh, I had the privilege to see John Williams in person at the Hollywood Bowl. I actually saw him twice. So I saw him in 2019. I was much farther away from the sit from the stage. And then a couple of years ago, uh, I think last year, actually, I, when I went again to see him, the Maestro of the Movies, he not only performed music to Star Wars, which I bought a lightsaber for. Um, unfortunately, the lightsaber broke. So I didn't get a new one. <laughs> it was only 10 bucks. I'm not going to cry too much. But I saw a variety of his film scores. And I that was really moving to me. I still tear up on thinking of just how special it was, you know, to be alive at the same time that John Williams is. I mean, he's a composer that has written for so many films and just reminded me of just much fonder childhood memories, not just with the Star Wars movies, but playing in string orchestra. I loved to play the violin by ear. And one of my favorite things to do was play like the Star Wars theme and the Jaws theme and play Jurassic Park and annoy the crap out of everybody. <laughs> I used to annoy all my teachers and classmates when I played the violin. I would just start playing by ear, even though I wasn't supposed to play that. And I, you know, would go off and do my own thing. And, you know, my siblings, you know, they, my sister played in the orchestra too. And my brother was in the band, not only like in man in high school, but he was also, uh, you know, he did his own thing. He had his own band. And so I admit that, uh, in that regard, you know, my brother at the very least is a better musician than I am right now. Um, you know, so I, you know, and I admire that, you know, and I, but yeah, the John Williams and his score for Star Wars, I mean, it's just so influential. And, you know, I honestly am, again, just privileged and thankful that I was able to visit uh, and see him, uh, you know, in the time that we still have. Last summer, I visited Disneyland's Galaxy's Edge, finally. And I visited with my mom. It was a belated birthday gift. So hi, mom, if you're listening. I called Galaxy's Edge Star Wars Land. I still will to me because that follows the pattern of the naming of the Disneylands. Because Disneyland, when it was established in 1955, there was Fantasyland. There was Adventureland. There's, you know, New Orleans Square, the Main Street. You know, there's certain areas that were named lands. And I personally, you know, still stick with that naming convention so I'm kind of frustrated that they don't do that with Galaxy's Edge but anyway I you know when I went it was later at night and it was really cool um, to get to see everything all lit up and I was thrilled to just wander through Black Spar Outpost I saw X-Wing fighters and droids and 
a life-size Millennium Falcon, which is still really cool. I didn't get a chance to go on any of their rides there, so I didn't ride Rise of the Resistance. I really want to. That ride looks so cool. I've seen all the ride-throughs on YouTube, but it's nowhere near the same as being on it yourself. I didn't get a droid. I didn't get a lightsaber, but I know I'm going to make the time to do that someday. So I will go back. I will go back again and spend my hard-earned money on Galaxy's Edge uh, for myself at some point. I somehow didn't get to see Kylo Ren or the Stormtroopers, which is a bummer. Um, I must have stayed under the radar or just I, I'm not the droid that they're looking for. So it's fine. You know, it's funny. I just I'm going on and on about Star Wars now in this podcast years later. It's nearly a lifetime of loving the original series. I've seen the ads for Ahsoka and the Acolyte and a few other things. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, there's a lot of Star Wars stuff right now. There's the Bad Batch. There's like Clone Wars. I mean, there's so much new stuff that's coming out. And the Mandal Mandalorian too, even the Mandal Mandalorian. Um, honestly, I, I really haven't watched any of the new Disney Star Wars stuff. I tried watching Clone Wars. I gave it a shot. And while it is very good storytelling, I just, the animation style, I guess, bugs me. And it's just not something that kept me interested. And that's kind of a bummer. Um, I mean, I, I watched the Star Wars trilogy, the new one, the sequel that's Disney owned in Rogue One. But that's pretty much it. I, I'm honestly not as big of a fan of the, of the Disney stuff as I am the George Lucas stuff. And I'm really content with the tales that George Lucas told. Uh, and filmed. I mean, for all the problems that people like to <laughs> stick with, with Star Wars, you know, I I don't know. I mean, I, I like the original stuff. And as far as other stuff is concerned, other media, um, I think I mentioned before that I, I had the comics I, I, I that I'm starting to sell because I just don't have the space or the time to read them again. Um, I had the novels at some point. I had a few. And I, you know, did try my hand at Lego Star Wars, the video game, but I don't think I really got through it. So I just, yeah, the only media that really moves me as far as Star Wars is concerned are the movies, are the original uh, Star Wars movies. And so as a science fiction storyteller, I find the influence of Star Wars something that I just can't escape. I'm still writing Star Wars fan fiction all these years later, by the way. So it's not just based on the sequel trilogy. I have some new original stuff, original, I guess, uh, Star Wars stuff. So if you're interested in reading any of those stories that I wrote more recently, you can click on the link uh, there through Archive of Our Own, and they're linked in the description box below. So you can find and read all of my stories. And coincidentally, my uh, pen name is Easily Distracted Jedi. Uh, so you can find my stuff on Archive of Our Own AO3 uh, if you're interested. And I will warn you, uh, for folks that are younger, you probably shouldn't read my stories. Uh, I have a lot of mature themes uh so that i'll just leave it at that so it's probably best if you have if you're someone that's 18 or older you'll probably like my stories um, you know star wars itself the original star wars now i'm talking like the original trilogy from 1977 to like around what when return of the jedi came out it's like the 80s right um that time frame that story series is something that's influenced us you know just in general, I mean, it's influenced our culture and, and Western society a lot. It's influenced our want to pursue AI technology with the advent of droids and drones, uh, lasers and all the things lasers can do now in space flight, even controversially colonization or forming of other worlds besides our own. The cinematography techniques, going back to my dad and his love of that stuff. You know, the company behind them, Industrial Related Magic, that was in its infancy with the Star Wars series. And the music of Star Wars is really what pushed John Williams into the spotlight for decades. Star Wars is something that, again, has permeated a lot of what we are familiar with in Western culture and Hollywood and movies. You know, a lot of folks are familiar with Star Wars, like Star Wars... The characters, the music, the, the whole storyline is something a lot of people are familiar with. It's a basic story of good versus evil. And that's one that can be expanded upon and played with in a variety of scenarios. And that's what makes Star Wars a film series, you know, really stand the test of time. With all that rambling on Star Wars, I'd like to say this. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of my podcast, please let me know with a like and down in the comments below.
Also, again, I'm welcoming any suggestions for naming this thing. I don't know what to call it. So far, I'm just leaving it Other Topics Podcast. If you have a better title for this, um, please leave your suggestions in the comments below, too. Feel free to subscribe to my art YouTube channel for more tour reviews, fan content, original character content. And once again, thank you for listening. May the Force be with you.